Now what I'd like to talk to you guys about is troubleshooting the bill acceptor. First thing you want to do when you got a problem is obviously you want to come up, because we have these new fancy uh, LEDs located on the front, is you want to look at the status of the LEDs. See what they're doing and cross-reference that to your information card. You also want to verify the program version. Make sure you're running the right version for the game. And you also want to make sure that everything is connected properly. Everything is plugged in. All your edge connectors are making good contact. Now, we have, we have found in some cases on the interface cards, on the back where the edge connector sets, you have your basic, they're basically like little spring connectors. Those get bent out of shape. You get one bent out of shape, you either need, if you can realign it, do so. If not, we're going to have to replace it. Um, we also want to verify that the machine doesn't have any outstanding tilts on it. Any questions? Whew, quiet. Okay, we have finished the actual presentation for the cash flow. Now what I'd like to do is I would like to go into the STS program and show you a little bit about that. And the nice thing about this is this STS program is going to function, let me close out of here, and we're going to open up our cash flow STS. Now this is the setup that we use when we're down in the shop and we need to do some diagnosis on it. We need to verify what version of firmware and what version of boot code is in there. It's very simple to do. You take the USB cable that you use on your PPM. You're going to plug into the front. And I can't see. Come on. Okay, plugged into the front, and you're going to use the USB port on your laptop. And you'll notice that we come up and we actually see a serial number for the unit. Now, if I were to unplug this, that would go away, and it says that we have no product. Can everybody see that? So we're going to go ahead and plug that bad boy back in. We've got our serial number. Now what we can do is we can come up, and you'll also see up on the top, we actually start highlighting again. If we unplug, we lose it. We plug it in, we can highlight it, and this is how we can go through and we can read our validator. Can you do that one more time, please? Sure, not a problem. Up at the top, we lose it, we plug it back in, comes back in highlighted. Now, what you want to do is, obviously, you want to read it first before you do anything. So we're going to hit the read button, and it's going to come up, and it's going to give us a screen like this, and it's going to tell us the things that are going to go, that are going on. It's actually going to tell us on the top line, under modules, it's going to tell us what version of firmware we're running in there. And we're looking at the last three digits to tell us what version of firmware is loaded in there. And as you can see right now, we have version 1.3.0 in there. We also have version 111 for boot code. Now, we can actually go through, and using the STS program, we could go through and we could edit, and we could change the firmware that's in there simply by going into here. If I were to come in and I want to change my application firmware, I want to check the box, and this is actually going to allow me to load something in there. Okay? So, and right now, I've only got 130 on my computer. So I really can't go through and change it right now. But if you wanted to, you could just, uh, you want to select. Now, we also give it out in two different versions. We give it in a bin version and a .hex version. Your hex version is going to be for your prom chips. If you're doing a flash update, you want to use your .bin. So we could go ahead and open it. Okay, and we could write to it. And writing to it will allow us to go ahead and change the firmware. And it tells us right here that we're actually loading the, fir the, the version of firmware. 
We're going to go through, and when, when you get a good load, you're always going to get a cycle and a stack. So if you hear the cycle stack, you know you got a good uh, firmware load. Now, we can also go through and set up configuration settings. And through here, you can go in and set up whether or not, here, let's open this up a little bit more. And it gives us a lot to choose from. We can go through and we can choose, we can go ahead and change the serial number. We could change our model number. Um, right now we've got this set as a down stacker and the bezel type is a standard. Now if we wanted to change the bezel type, we check the box which allows us to open up our drop down. Now we've got two choices. You've got your standard bezel and you've got your platform bezel. You need to be able to set that up depending on what type of bezel you're using. We're going to keep ourselves set at standard uh, here. We have a non-prom unit and a prom unit. Now, you guys aren't going to get this. This is a little different version of the STS program that we use as an engineer's version. Uh, we also have interface. This is where you can go through and set it up to whether or not you want it to be an IGT, Netflix, an RS-232, or in a standalone mode. Now, if you're using it for test purposes, you obviously want to have it in standalone. If I were to change that from standalone and turn it into a Netplex, and I come out of there, I'm not going to be able to accept a bill because I don't have communication with my host. Go ahead. The question was, if you change it from a down stacker to an up stacker, does it change the optics in there? And now, are you talking about for the, uh, for the barcode? Yeah. No, you physically have to go in and change that. You're actually going to have to go in and physically move that barcode reader to the other side. Now, as, as in accepting bills, obviously most places have you set up as four-way acceptance anyway, so that wouldn't make any difference. Any other questions? Why would we need the option? Well, okay, the question was, why do we need the option to change the serial number? And this is actually an engineer's version. It's a little bit more beefy than what you guys will actually have at this point in your shop. So we can go through and change the serial number if we have to do certain things to it that would, you know, that we would actually have to change the serial number and give it a new serial number for warranty purposes. Now, we would go through and change a serial number so that we can go ahead and give you a full warranty again. But obviously, you wouldn't have that option. Now, I saw somebody had a question in back. Oh, okay. Very good. So we're going to keep this in the standalone mode. Um, we can set this up for a lot of different things. And we can make our changes right here, right there. Now, we also have our bill inhibit. And actually, let me do this. Let me show you this like this. And this will actually give us all of our bills. I mean, we can go up to 50 different bills as far as what we want to inhibit or not inhibit. And we can set it up. We can turn on certain bills, turn off certain bills, just like using your configuration coupon when you're at the game by pushing the MMI button and putting in your configuration coupon, you can do the exact same thing here while you're sitting on the bench. So we go ahead and actually. What are all the other bills there? Yes. In the world, there's lots of different bills. Yes. And especially with your multi width bill acceptor, your, your, uh, your, 80, your 83 millimeter. You're talking, you've got a lot of different DNOMs. This just makes it so that MEI can actually go out and sell this product anywhere in the world. We give, they give you that much leeway so that they can use it in just about any jurisdiction. Any currency. Any currency. As long as you've got firmware that'll talk right. Um, the next thing that uh, we can actually go in and set up some configuration commands. Now, one thing I did, I was actually here at the Excalibur, and I did an update on the cash flow 
on the floor here updating to the new 50s. And one thing that was requested of us was that we clear the audit as we're going through and updating these. Now, each head carries its own audit information. We're not clearing the audit on the game. We're just clearing the audit in the head. So f with this, I could actually go through and more, mostly this is set up for when you want to go and configure your PPM. So actually what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to close out of here and let's Okay, we're going to open you back up so we can start fresh. Now, you'll also see the same thing happen when you plug in your PPM. You'll notice on the bottom of the screen, nothing is highlighted. You do have it highlighted up on the top. Once you plug in, it's going to go out and it's going to find it. And it tells us right here we've got one handheld. So now we can come up here to our handhelds and it's going to open up a window. And this is going to tell us, now I've got quite a few PPMs on, on this setup. And I can go through and I can select. Now the one that you know is that is the one that's highlighted. We have this 061. So we can come over to this one and just click on it and it's going to tell us what firmware we've got in there. Right here. Now, if I had a PPM that was only set up with boot code, it would come up and it would tell me what version of boot code I've got loaded in there. And that you can change off of the STS system. If you guys are uh, running, in, you're running into an issue where you've got some games that uh, just are not accepting because it's got old boot code and you didn't know about it and you need to update your boot code, bring your PPM down to the shop, hook it up, download the correct uh, version of boot code, and then you can go up on the floor, download that into your interface cards, and everything's good. Then, then you can run back through and you can update your your version firmware and everything should function just fine. Do you have this stuff on your website, David? We don't have all of this information on the website. Uh, I'm hoping that we do. We have a lot. I mean the programs themselves, the boot code and all that. No, the, the boot code actually you would have to order through us. Uh, you can't just pull it off of the website. Do we have any questions on that so far? Do we have any questions? Yeah. Can you load up the all those defaults? Is it taking it off the or the Pardon me? There will be fact well did everybody hear the question? The question was when you go to do it the first time, will it have default settings or not? And yet you will have default settings. And if there's anything that you want specifically done, this is where you can go in and you can set it up to do those specific things, such as clearing your audit data as you're doing an update. Any other questions? IG, an IGT tech told you that pretty soon these units are going to start stealing money because of the micro switch? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, you're right. It's a good thing there's a dispute window. I can't, I can't say for sure that that's going to happen. Uh, now, I, and actually, we've got confirmation that it has stolen bills before. Once again, I'm not as deep into, I, I don't actually get out into the field and do, get onto the casino floor and, and figure out why this is going on. And that, that very well could be. And that, see, that's the input that we need to have so that we can go back to MEI and say, look, guys, we're having a problem with the micro switches on the interface cards. 
we need to do something about that, give it a beefier switch, or maybe think about going to a different brand of switch. But that's very good. And that one I'm going to bring up as soon as I get back to the shop. Yes, yes, most definitely. If you're running into any issues with your interface cards, please send them in to us. Let us take a look at them. Let us find out what's going on with them so we can make corrections and adjustments and do what we need to do to make this a good product for you. Okay, um, at this point, I don't have a whole lot more to tell you about this. I would like for you guys to come up and play around with this stuff a little bit. I'll let you get on the computer. You can, you know, play around with it, see what you can do, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit for the printer training. Okay, uh, first of all, stay put. First of all, big round of applause. Today. Thank you. Uh, secondly, we're going to take a coffee break now. There should be coffee, cookies, and stuff out there. Remember the slot, math, seminar is over here, and then the future logic printers will be over here at 3.30. Okay? So where's the manager, too? He's got your manager, too, right here. <laughs> Bueno, uno, dos, tres, probando.